Hey everyone, so welcome to my sixth lecture on the course Ordinary Differential Equation and today we are going to see the fifth method on how to solve first order linear differential equations. So till now we have seen variable separable method, reduction to variable separable method, exactness, integrating factor and today we are going to see the fifth method which is nothing but linear differential equation. If you have missed my previous lectures, I will be posting the link in the description, you can go through them. Okay, so let's see what we are going to see today. So today we are going to see what are linear differential equations. Then we will see types of linear differential equation. Then we will see the proof for the formula as well and examples and at the end homework for a practice. So this is what the agenda is. Now let's see what do you mean by a linear differential equation. Definitely the degree of dy by dx should be one. Moreover, degree of dependent variable should also be one and there should not be the product of the dependent variable and the derivative. So these are the three things one has to take care of to call a differential equation to be a linear differential equation. Don't get confused with the nomenclature but yeah so the three things which you need to keep in mind is the degree of dy by dx should be one this should be one second thing is what degree of dependent variable so here y is a dependent variable so degree of dependent variable should be one and the third thing is there should not be the product of the dependent variable and the derivative so when these three things are satisfied we call such a differential equation to be a first order linear differential equation okay so now here what i want to say is my p of x means it's a function of x q of x is a function of x moreover my p and q they are continuous functions of x now why i need continuity that i will tell you in the due course but these are continuous functions of x only okay there is no y this is one thing many times what happen this if you have a differential equation in this form it might become difficult to solve so what do we do is we treat x now here y is a dependent variable on x so what we do is we reverse the role we treat x as the dependent variable of y so in that scenario the first order linear differential equation will be of the form now here my x is the dependent variable and y is the independent variable okay so you, many times you will say that this is difficult to solve you try to rewrite in this form if you can try to re if you could rewrite in this form then it might become an easier problem to solve okay so but anyways i'll be playing only with the first form this is just for the information and which will help you definitely if you do more and more examples okay now there are two types of linear differential equation homogeneous linear differential equation and non-homogeneous linear differential equation again do not get confused with the word homogeneous that we saw in our third lecture okay here the homogeneous means if your right hand side is zero if q of x is zero that means we call this to be a homogeneous linear differential equation and if your right hand side is non-zero then we call this as a non-homogeneous linear differential equation now if if the differential equation is homogeneous it's a very easy problem to solve how can you solve you can easily solve using variable separable so let's have a look uh, i am solving right now but make sure you pause the video and you can try on your own as well see if the right hand side is zero i can take p of x into y on the left hand side and i can do variable separable so what i mean is i can rewrite my first equation into this form and now left hand side only contains y right hand side only contains x so i can integrate both sides so if i integrate this is nothing but ln of y equal to this now if i take exponential on both sides my y will be my y will be e raised to integration of this plus c let's call e raised to c as another constant k so this is how the solution looks like if you have a homogeneous first order linear differential equation of this type. So if your right hand side is zero, that means it's a homogeneous using variable separable, one can easily tell me the solution. But many times you will see right hand side will be non-zero and then in that scenario question is what will be the solution. Okay, so now let's go for the second case that means the non-homogeneous case. Suppose your right hand side is non-zero. So this is dy by dx plus p. p means p is the function of x. I'm not writing p of x but p is a function of x into y equal to q of x now you cannot do variable separable now because you cannot separate your x and y so we can't use first method you can't use second method reduction to variable separable because 
I don't know whether P and Q, I mean they are homogeneous, whether the degrees of X are same or not. It can be anything, right? Sin X, tan inverse of X, it can be anything. So I cannot use the second method as well. Third method, exactness. Okay, then let's try by exactness. So if I bring PY on the right hand side and if I rearrange the term, this is what I get. Now here, what is M? The coefficient of DX. What is my N? Coefficient of DY. So if I do now M with respect to Y and N with respect to X, what do we get? So we get M with respect to Y to be minus P and N with respect to X to be zero. So from here we can see these two things are not same. Therefore, this is a non-exact linear differential equation. So now what was the fourth method? The fourth method we saw was integrating factor. Now let's see, can we find integrating factor? Now in integrating factor, we saw two methods. Let's see one by one, which formula will be helpful for us. Okay, so let's go by first method. This was the formula, right? This has to be independent of y, then only I will get the integrating factor. So here, what do I get? So I get p and what is p? p is nothing but p of x. p is nothing but the function of x. So in this case, my r of x is nothing but p of x, which is a function of x. That means it is independent of y. Great. So in this case, what is my integrating factor? My integrating factor is nothing but e raised to integration of p of x dx. So this is what my integrating factor is. So once we get integrating factor, what is the next thing we do? We multiply our non-exact differential equation by this integrating factor so that this becomes an exact differential equation. So now let's multiply f to this equation and let's see what we get. So this was our integrating factor and this was our non-exact differential equation. You multiplying f with this what do I get? e raised to integration of p into q minus e raised to integration of p into py minus e raised to integration of p dy equal to 0. This is what I have. Now if you and now this is my m this minus this is my m and this is my n. Now it is your job to verify that m with respect to y is equal to n with respect to x. Okay. If you are any, if you are getting doubt you can discuss with me in the comment section. So here now it is exact. Therefore, now what do I have? Now if you observe the second and the third term, I can rewrite it as in this way. Now if you observe what is the derivative of this product, e raised to integration into derivative of y, which is nothing but this term plus y into derivative of this. What is derivative of this? e raised to integration as it is into derivative of the upper part. Now what is derivative of integration by fundamental theorem of calculus derivative of integration is nothing but p and therefore I have p over here in the picture. So therefore this two term is nothing but is the derivative of this product term. So I hope this step is clear. If not just rewind and make sure this step is clear. Okay so once I have this I can get this on the right hand side and if I take integration on both side what I get I get let me write this over here so once I take the integration on both side what is integration of derivative it is nothing but the integrand so here the integrand I have written equal to integration of this term which is over here plus c the constant of integration and from here if I multiply by e raised to minus integration p of x this will come over here and I get y equal to the solution so what I get is so this is what your solution is to the first order non-homogeneous linear differential equation. Okay, now at the start I told you that my P and Q are continuous functions. Now why I need continuity because I am taking integration over here. Now what is the guarantee that this integration will exist? Now that continuity gives us that guarantee. If you recall Riemann theory, Riemann proved that if you have a continuous function, then the integration always exists. How to find? That's a different story, but it definitely exists. So I know that all these things exist because my P and Q are continuous function. So that is the place where you need continuity. So this is the proof for the solution of a non-homogeneous linear differential equation. Okay, now let's take one example and one homework problem and then we will stop. Okay, now this is a first order linear differential equation. Let's see whether it is linear in our sense. Our sense means the one which I just discussed with you. So if I try to rewrite this as y dash plus you divide by cos x. So this is what I have. So if you observe it is dy by dx plus p of x into y equal to q of x. p and q both are continuous functions of x and the coefficient of dy by dx is also one. So that's important thing, right? Make sure you notice this part. 
for whatever work I have done, the coefficient of dy by dx is 1. If this is not 1, you will divide by that term. So here it is 1, so it's fine. So now p is 10x, my q is the right hand side. Okay, now what is the solution? Now you can directly use the formula. So what is the formula? Formula is y into e raised to integration of p of x. What is p of x? 10x dx equal to integration of e raised to integration of p of x into my right hand side. So this is what we have. Now what is integration of 10x? It's log of sec x. So e raised to ln of sec x. And what is e raised to ln of sec x? It is nothing but sec x. So y into secant of x is equal to e raised to this is nothing but secant of x you multiply sec x inside so what do i get 2 cos x sin x minus sec square x dx plus c now what is this this is nothing but sin 2x and you know what is integration of sin 2x minus cos 2x upon 2 you know what is integration of secant square x 10x and at the end you will divide by sec x so you get y equal to something so that's what your solution is make sure you complete the step and comment your answer in the comment section and write your answer in the comment section so that others can verify so this is how you can use this formula so if you are able to rewrite your differential equation in this form you can directly use this formula just mention what is your p what is your q this thing is was our integrating factor if you want you can find integrating factor separately first and then you can plug in over here or you can directly find the value over here both are okay so that's how one can solve such kind of problems now let me give you one homework problem this is the initial value problem because it contains a differential equation as well as the initial condition so you will get a unique solution okay that means you will get a particular solution now you have to solve this differential equation so the first thing is check whether can you do by variable separable or reduction to variable separable or exactness or integrating factor if none then the fifth is go by linear differential equation well no need to check you can do this by linear differential equation try to rewrite in the standard form write down p q and use the formula to get the answer and don't forget to find the value of c using this initial condition so i hope you enjoyed the lecture and i hope the concepts are clear if yes do not forget to like share and subscribe thank you